Welcome back, everyone. Sheepdog Smokey here, and we have more of the same from the left side of all political arguments. Now we have Senator Gillibrand that says we need to take action against Gorsuch and Kavanaugh if they strike back, or if they go back on the word and strike down Roe. Here's a few things that are wrong with this. One, she will never get 67 votes in the Senate to remove a Supreme Court justice. It's just not going to happen. Two, precedent in a court case is not law. It is a court precedent. If precedent was always upheld, we would have so many things still going on in our country that are horrible. Uh, for example, the precedent of segregation in Brown versus BOE. It was precedent, uh, according to years of the schools doing it. It was precedent. And if the courts had decided precedent was more important, more important than upholding the Constitution, then we would still have segregated schools. There are so many other precedents that would have just far-reaching effects on everyone. Next, Congress does not need more oversight over the judicial. This is the Democrats' last Hail Mary. They have tried to take control of the executive. Now they're trying to take control of the judiciary. This is their ploy to just control the government. Right now, they use emotional arguments and hot issue topics to try to make it sound like there are people openly just breaking every, pardon me, every law we have, that we're just segregating and enslaving and murdering and all this, and none of it's true. Just this week, we've had a Democratic lawyer admit on the record that Nadler's subpoena required Attorney General Barr to break United States law. Now, I've said that for quite some time because Attorney General Barr has point blank said the 8% redacted is what is, made, what is possible to release to the public according to the law. That 8% must be redacted for it to be public. There is 2% that must be redacted even before Congress can read it because it in includes grand jury information. That is the law. He cited U.S. Code and U.S. law when he sent that letter explaining the redactions, which, by the way, Mueller and his team helped to find what needed to be redacted. Congress has ignored it. They've not gone to read the 2% only redacted version. None of them in the House Judiciary have. Yet they've been acting as if they know everything in it, and they've been parading around as if, well, he, he redacted things that would prove obstruction or prove collusion while ignoring that Bob Mueller himself, the man who has seen everything, said there was no collusion and there is no evidence of obstruction. Nadler, Cohen, and the rest of them are just idiotic cowards who cannot fathom that we're about to see high-ranking people held to account for crimes they've committed. The Steele dossier, according to Steele himself, was largely unverified, yet it is the only thing used to gain a FISA warrant. And they're running scared. Gillibrand here is making another one. Precedent can be overturned. <clears throat> and very simply, in the 1970s, we didn't have ultrasound and other technologies that we do today that multiple medical doctors have used to point blank say that a baby is a baby, not a clump of cells, as Democrats like to harp on. Notice that an eagle's egg or an owl's egg or a buffalo fetus must be protected, but not humans. And it's a chilling thing to look at. We have AOC and her, the world's going to end in 12 years. Well, you're just a moron if you actually believed me. Although, until people started really pushing back on it and made her call them stupid for believing it, she was running wild with that, trying to push the Green New Deal to bankrupt the country. Gillibrand has chosen this to be her Sparta that she's going to hold, to borrow a euphemism from, well, a corollary, to Booker's I am Spartacus moment. This is her, if you dare, overturn precedent, which the judicial has done before, and may do if they find sufficient evidence to do so, she's going to try to impeach them for doing their job. Now notice, neither Gorsuch nor Kavanaugh specifically said they would, no matter what, uphold precedent. Neither one of them said, 
<clears throat> that they would oppose overturning Roe v. Wade. Neither one of them said anything to that effect. They did mention that there is a preference to uphold precedent, which there is. When the Supreme Court has said, this is what this law means, there is a preference to uphold it. But, again, we have much more information available now than we did even 15 years ago, let alone the 40-some-odd years that we had, or 40-some-odd years ago where we had Roe v. Wade decided. We have Roe, in this case, the young woman who was pressured into making the case, who has become a staunch pro-life advocate. We have medical doctor after medical doctor telling the world they will never perform an abortion because that is taking a human life. We have videos where a child is clearly responding to external stimuli and moving around and avoiding the ultrasound machine when they're taking an ultrasound. If that's not evidence of rudimentary intelligence of, I don't like this, I need to move, and knowing how to move, I don't know what is. But you see, the millions upon millions of dollars that Planned Parenthood donates to the Democrats every year, which of course came to them from the Democrats in the form of federal funding, is more important than human life. Senator Gillibrand cares nothing for the unborn, because this is a way to keep the rabid liberals of let me do whatever I want voting for her. This is not about, as they will tell you, rape and incest. This is not about, as they will tell you, situations where a mother's life is threatened, even though no medical doctor has ever agreed with that statement. This is about abortion on demand, abortion as birth control. You look at Georgia and Alabama, and then you look at a state like Virginia, where Ralph Northam signed into law a new pr policy allowing doctors, if the mother has not yet decided by the time she's giving birth, that the child will be born, the umbilical cut, and the baby, quote, made comfortable, end quote. And then a conversation will take place. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm fairly certain that babies come out extremely hungry because every time I have talked to anyone while I'm waiting at a hospital for one of my nie nephews or my niece to be born or any of my friends who have children, the people who were there say that they all couldn't wait to see the baby while they were being made to wait to go back to see the mother. I know from my sister and my sister-in-law who both said they were extremely tired while they were feeding the new baby. I also know that the new baby cannot regulate their temperature very well. They are scared out of their mind. So they're cold, wet, and scared, and they're going to be made comfortable while a conversation ensues that it all boils down to, should we kill the baby now, or do you want to keep it now? And that's abhorrent to me. It's the epitome of evil when you ask a mother, uh, yes, you just gave birth, and the baby's in the other room, which effectively says, it's not your body. Uh, do you want it to live or die? And Democrats have no problem with this. Of course, they twist and turn anything and everything so that they can try to oppose and strike down every law they don't like when there is a ban after eight weeks. Some women don't even know they're pregnant at eight weeks. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm male. But the way I understand it, the female anatomy tends to menstruate every 28 days. That would be four weeks. Let's say it is the ultimate in time coincidences, where you miss your period exactly four weeks after having sex and falling pregnant or becoming pregnant. That would be four weeks. And I don't know of any of my female friends who, if they missed a period, don't instantly start thinking, I should check. Even if they're not having sex, they still want to know why they missed the period. Now, the Georgia law is a 12-week ban. And of course, AOC is famous for saying that Women don't even know, even at that point, okay? Yes, they can. I'm sorry, this is not the 1970s, where even the best of EPTs had a 50-50 shot of being right. This is a new era, where there are some EPTs claiming they are 95 or more percent effectively perfect. But Democrats don't care. You see, when it's 
science that they want, like global warming, even though we have ice cap, uh, icebergs and ice caps that are growing, we aren't even allowed to debate the Green New Deal. Just do it. But when it's something like this, where we have medical doctor after medical doctor after medical doctor that has that is saying, screaming to the world, that is a baby, not a clump of cells. They have a heartbeat. They have neural activity. That is a human life. Well, how do you know that? I really want one of them to look that idiot politician in the face and say, well, I spent eight years in medical school and then X number of years in residency, and I've been a practicing doctor for X plus number of years. Where did you go to medical school, Congressman? Make them admit they are not an expert. Make Senator Gillibrand admit she is not a medical doctor, not an OBGYN, surgeon, GP, general practitioner, anything. Because, of course, when someone actually does that to her and lays out their extensive medical experience and then looks her in the face and say, and what is your medical experience, Senator? She'll sputter and turn it into an attack upon her person and demand that all testimony be stricken and that she just be obeyed. It is Democrat standard operating procedure. Anytime you are proven wrong, anytime someone doesn't bow and scrape to you and praise your moves to subjugate them, they are a racist or a sexist or they are part of the patriarchy or any number of things that you use as a emotional jab at someone to force them to either be silent or change their point of view. It's very simple. Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh Gorsuch, Roberts, any of them could, and it is their legal right, and it is, it is actually precedent, they could decide to change something that is precedent. They could overturn it. And the Democrats hate this, just as they hate that it is legal for President Trump to enforce border law. It is legal for him to close a port of entry. It is legal for him to tell illegal aliens, no, you can't come in and vanish into our country until we finally find you years and years later and deport you for missing your court date. They can't stand that they aren't totally and completely in control, and they're finally showing their totalitarian side in many ways. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Because, honestly, I would love to see a constitutional law professor, hopefully not one from Harvard or Yale or another liberal place, but I'd love to see a con law expert testifying in front of the Senate that, no, Senator, you can't impeach them because they said precedent is normally upheld, because that means sometimes it may not be. And no, they didn't perjure themselves. And no, you don't get to take more oversight of them. You are one of three branches. You make the law. The president enforces the law. The judiciary interprets the law. And interpretations are subject to change. But I've talked about it long enough. Let me know what you think. Make sure to comment below. But when you do, keep it civil. We do not learn from argument. We learn from debate. Also, please remember to like and share this video, as well as to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you are among the first to know of all new content as it is posted. Until next time, everyone have a wonderful day.